as you evaluate the locations to decide where to put your company, uh, there are a number of methods for choosing the location once you've narrowed down the alternatives. We have the locational break-even analysis and transportation methods that look at the cost to the company or the profits incurred at the different locations. We have a factor rating analysis that allows us to compare locations using both qualitative and quantitative factors. The method we want to look at now is what is called the center of gravity method. The way the center of gravity method works is that we take the locations where uh, we have, maybe we have retail locations we are going to uh, distribute to, and we look at where does our warehouse or distribution center go that minimizes the cost based on our distance um, or distance and quantity that we're transporting to those retail locations. So unlike the other methods, this one is primarily for warehouses or for distribution centers because we want to look at where we are located versus those locations that we are shipping materials to. So what we do is we take our locations and we might have them on a map and we take that map and we overlay a grid on top of that. So you can see here for example that we have four locations and we can lay a grid on top of those four locations. And the first thing we do is that we give numbers to our grid. So you can see we have some spacing here and we'll label one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't want these grid lines to be too far apart because then we're having to estimate whether a location is 1.2 or 1.3. So it's better to err on the side of narrow grid lines. Well, the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out what the coordinates are for each of our locations that we are going to distribute to. So in this case, let's start with D1, for example. And D1, we want to find the X and the Y coordinates. So the horizontal is the X, the vertical is the Y. And so we can see, for example, D1 has an X of 3 and a Y of 5. All right, let's look at D2. And D2 has coordinates 2 for x and 2 for y. Okay. D3 has the coordinates 5 for x and 4 for y. For D4, we're at 6 and 6. If we have an equal number of material going to these different locations, then we can identify the best location for our warehouse or distribution center by finding the average of these numbers. So we'll find the x and we'll find y, and we do so by taking our x coordinates, 3, 2, 5, and 6, adding them together, and dividing by 4. So if we take 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6, we get 16, we divide by 4, and we end up with 4. For y, we take 5 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6. We're going to divide that by 4 as well. Well, 5 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6, that's 17 divided by 4. And we can take 17 divided by 4, and we get 4.25. So if we go back to our map, we would find for x, we would go up for 4, and for y, we're going to 4.25. And so our distribution center, our warehouse, should be located here. If this grid is overlaid on a map, we can then see what town that is, uh, what road that is nearby, to help us to determine the location. 
Notice where we ended up is essentially midway between D1 and D3 and between D2 and D4. But what if we don't send an equal number of units of our uh, product to those four locations? We then want to shift the location if we have one company or retailer where most of our product goes to. So in that case, what we need to do is do a weighted average calculation based on the amount being delivered. So let's assume that 400 units go to D1, 900 units go to D2, 200 units go to D3, and 100 units go to D4. If that's the case, because D1 and D2 are where more of our shipments go to, we expect our distribution center to shift to the left and down. So let's take a look at how we would do that calculation. We would do our calculations for X and Y, but this time we are going to weight those. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 400 and we want to divide it by the total quantity here. So 400 plus 900 plus 200 plus 100. So that's 300, 1200, 1600. Okay. And we're going to multiply that times 3. We're going to then take 900 divided by 1600. And we're going to multiply that times 2. So you can see we're weighting each of the x coordinates based on the percentage of material that's going to that location. We then do 200 divided by 1600 times 5 plus 100 divided by 1600 times 6. Okay. All right, so let's do this calculation here. We get 400 divided by 1600 is a 0.25 times 3. So it gives us 0.75. We then have 900 divided by 1600 times 2. So 1.125 plus we have 200 divided by 1600 times 5, so that's 0.625. And then we have our last coordinate, that's the 100 divided by 1600 times 6, so 0.375. And so our x, we add those up together, 0.75 plus 1.125 plus 0.625 plus 0.375, we get a total of 2.875. Okay. So for the x's, 2.875 is going to be about here. So you can see the distribution center is, in fact, shifting to the left. Now where exactly is it? We're going to need our y calculation. Uh, so let's create a new one here. So y is equal to and we're going to have 400 divided by 1600 and we want to multiply it times the y coordinate so 5 plus 900 divided by 1600 times the next y coordinate, which is 2, plus 200 divided by 1600, times the y coordinate for the third one, which is 4, Plus, and we have the last one, which is 100 units out of 1,600. And the y coordinate for the last location is 6. So now we need to calculate that y. So 400 divided by 1,600, that's the 0.25 times 5. Okay. 
which is 1.25. So this is 1.25 here. And then we have 900 divided by 1600 times 2. So 1.125. plus 200 divided by 1600 times 4. So that gives us a 0 0.5. And then we have our 100 divided by 1600 times 6, a 0.375. And let's add those together, 1.2. 1.25 plus 1.125 plus 0.5 plus 0.375, and that's a total of 3.25. So we said our x coordinate was 2.875, our y coordinate is 3.25, and so you can see how our location of our warehouse or distribution center has shifted closer to locations D1 and D2, which is where we are shipping the majority of our inventory. So center of gravity method can be used to find a warehouse or distribution center by taking the locations of your retailers or who you distribute to and overlaying a grid on top of that map, determining the coordinates of each of those locations, and then calculating an average or weighted average if you're going to consider the amount of cargo going to each location.